Next up, Belmont Park Live after a narrow defeat in the Yado at Saratoga. Lady Joan kicks off a trifecta of stakes where she'll try and use her speed and inside draw to her advantage in the John B. Hattinger. It's a rematch in the great two gallant bloom where multiple graded stakes winner Lewis Bay looks to add to her already impressive resume for trainer Chad Brown. Standing in her way, the filly who finished just ahead of her in the ballerina from Saratoga can still there earn her first graded stakes victory of her career. All that and more coming up on this Sunday edition of Belmont Park Live presented by Claiborne Farm. 100 years of doing the usual unusually well. Great to have you with us on a tremendous card here on this Sunday afternoon here in Elmont, New York. Gray skies, but perfect weather for the horses to be running out around the track. We have three stakes races coming up. Greg Wolf alongside the voice of Monmouth Park, Frank Miramonti, good to see you, my man. Pleasure to work with you, Greg. Welcome back. I hope Thank you got you. a good seat on your flight home. Uh, I did. Yeah, I got a, I got to about an hour or so of sleep. Good man. Running on fumes. Uh, but we have good races to carry me through here. The gallant bloom, it's going to be fun to see Lewis Bay still there. Go at each other here one more time. And, and Lewis Bay last time out, all the speed, it seemed like, in that race in the ballerina sort of backed up. She was the only one that kind of hung around there. She did. She had to deal with Finley's lucky charm in the early stages of that race. So she weakened late, but she had an excuse. She's an absolute gem of consistency, Greg. She has only been out of the money one time in her career. That was in the grade one test. You can forgive that. She's the high earner in here, but it is a tough cast, including another Chad Brown runner as well. Uh, here's a look at her in the bed of roses. This was a great three victory. This was the last time that she was at Belmont. It was at seven furlongs. We know she loves this racetrack. She absolutely does. And you can see this dominant performance. This was back in June. So she was freshened up for the ballerina last time out. I didn't think that was a poor performance at all last time. She'll be happy to be home and she'll make her presence felt this afternoon. She's a nine to five morning line favorite, but as Frank mentioned, yeah, got to deal with, among others with her stable mate. Your love was on the outside and is an absolute horse for course here, three for four at Belmont. We'll talk plenty of more about the great two gallant bloom coming up. Get signed up, get started, and you can get down in what starts right here, the Naira Bet's late pick five. Bet $200, you'll get $200 in your account when you use that promo code Belmont Live, and you'll be able to bet any track anywhere anytime so we're kicking things off with the start of the Naira Bets late pick five here in race six at six furlongs on the turf New York breads in an entry level allowance go a mile and an eighth on the turf of the John B Hettinger in that seventh to kick off our stakes action then it's the great two gallant bloom was still there in Lewis Bay going head to head and then the Ashley T Cole trainer Chad Browning won the first four races on the card yesterday he added a fifth he has the favorite in all three stakes races coming up Weather and track conditions presented by Piranha Fly Spray, the preferred fly spray of Belmont Park. Piranha on, pest gone. The main track fast turf condition listed as good for today's action. So here's the lake that race that kicks off this Naira Betts late pick five. Pool at 47,000 and growing. And Frank right now, dream passage for Brad Cox. Coming off probably your best performance of her career last time out in a winning effort, nine to five. That was an explosive late kick that she showed down the center of the course last time out. Joel Rosario, as he does so often, gets up in the very last jump to win. The money has come in. Four horses have come back out of that race to run. Two of them won one third place finish, so it's certainly a productive heat she exits. It's time for a paddock report right now. It's brought to you by Hillendale Farm, now standing curling for $150,000. That means let's send it downstairs to Paul LaDuca. Hey, Paul. Yeah, we'll get to you, the horse you guys were just talking about, Dream Passage, and I thought she made a great appearance here in, in the paddock. The issue with her is, if you look at earlier in her career when she was actually going a distance to ground, she didn't have any gait issues. She's been having some gait issues, actually sprinting the last three times, breaking nine out of nine, five out of 11, and then seven out of seven. You know, the first time that Brad Cox was able to put her on the turf, she got the job done, and she was from way off the pace. So I think... She can't make that mistake here, guys. She needs to get out of the gate a little bit uh, better. The nine Hannah smile caught my attention here. This is a filly by Perfect Soul. Has been out since uh, June 21st. And, you know, I thought made a good appearance. Two for eight lifetime. Both wins here at Belmont. Comes in here with a nice little bullet drill. And I think a player in here at best. And uh, a horse that you need to very much consider. Saratoga Treasure of the Five, um, they have not 
they've sort of kept him in in the stall. They have not really walked him out. I don't know if they want to try to get him her riled up at all. She hasn't been out since July. This will be her first time going to distance the ground. Now Jose Ortiz will get the leg up. And then finally, the six in here, Cirque, getting Lasix for the first time. And speed is on her resume. And wow, she has showed it in the paddock. She acted up a couple times. Um, um, causing a little bit of issues for the handler and causing a little bit of issues for the outside two horses here in the seven and the eight, Greg. All right, we'll keep our eyes on her and see if she settles down at all. I thought she was really interesting here, making her four-year-old debut. Last time we saw her on the racetrack, she was a three-length winner on the turf. She'll add Lasix today for the comeback effort. This race again, as we've mentioned, kicks off the best bet in racing, the Naira Bets Late Pick 5. It's exclusively available online for Naira Bets customers and on track in New York. So get to NairaBets.com and get down in this sequence. Frank... Brave enough to put a ticket together for us. How are you going to play it? Well, this first race is almost a dartboard. If you wanted to narrow down this first leg, I like best the five Saratoga Treasure, the nine Hannah Smile, and the 11 Trey Charmant. As you can see, I have a lot more coverage. I'm going to go ahead and take a single in race number seven. It's the heavy favorite, 55. Will her price be too low? Yes. But do I think she'll just win anyway? Absolutely. The Gallant Bloom, I have it down to still there in Lewis Bay, the two that we talked about from the ballerina. My top pick is actually the seven Your Love who uh, gets an acid test this afternoon. I'm going four deep with my top pick being Red Knight in the Ashley T. Cole. And I'm gonna go ahead and single a second time starter in the finale, Evans Nice Now, by Trap Shot out of a Midnight Loot mare. Ran very well, I thought, in her debut. Now tries the turf. Midnight Loots on the grass are actually okay. This is on the dam side, however. We'll see what she can do. She'll certainly have some speed. Yeah, if you can make it to that last race, wow, that is a great betting race. It is wide open. Here's our post parade. For the race that kicks off the Naira Bets late pick five, Rock Avenue Road, big long shot at 43 to one for Rodrigo Yabillo. One for 19, gets back on the grass, but certainly faces a tall order at 43 to 1. Dream passage, ran her career best effort on the turf last start, and as a result, she's 9 to 5 now for Brad Cox. And she is very honest. She was won 2 of 12, and 2 of her last 3, as I mentioned earlier, a productive race she exits. Birthday gift, Rajiv Mirage aboard for Patrick Kelly at 15, 13 to 1. Made up some ground last time out over a course with some give in it. She'll be trying to roll late. John Hurtler sends out Shrink with Eric Consell, 32 to 1. There are many in here that have faced each other. Shrink was defeated by Trey Charmant and Loon Lake last time out at the spa off a little bit of a break. So Jimmy Ryerson, three-year-old filly, Saratoga Treasure, Jose Ortiz will be on board. We jump to the sixth, though, Cirque, who's making her four-year-old debut. Gets Lasix for that return. I know you liked her a little bit, Greg, and certainly there's nothing not to like. She's fresh and dangerous. Now back to the five. So here's Saratoga Treasure for Jimmy Ryerson. If you've been betting on the Patricia Generazio horses through Saratoga and Belmont, you've got bricks on your hand. A lot of money with some big prices. I think this horse is very live in my top selection. Breezy Gal, the seven I Rad Ortiz Jr. aboard for trainer Linda Rice, one of a pair she has in here. Always beware of Linda Rice, particularly when they have early speed. Breezy Gal has just that and exits a productive heat. Rider change on Citizen Matzo. It's Dylan Davis for Roy Lerman. First time Lasix was in the thick of it at the eighth pole last time before weakening. Morning line favorite, Hannah's smile, Manny Franco rides for Michelle Nevin. Certainly ran a good race in defeat last time behind Awesome Roar, who was a heavy favorite. There were a lot of gate issues before the start, and she handled herself very professionally. Ailish dropped in for attack for the first time last start. She got her maiden breaking win for Jorge Abreu. And sometimes when you wake up like that, you can come right back in a tougher spot. Trey Charmont, here's the other Linda Rice runner. She comes in off a win with Jose Lizcano. I was in a tough debate between her and Saratoga Treasure for my top pick. I think Trey Charmont is very dangerous here. And Loon Lake, I thought, had a look outside here at a huge price. Bruce Brown off the claim, David Cohen aboard. She was a lower price than Trey Charmont when they met last time, and Bruce Brown does a very good job off the claim. Let's go back to the horse who was the morning line favorite. So here's Hannah's smile. Right now she is the second choice on the board. At 3-1 to one for Michelle Nevin. This was back on June 21st, her most recent effort. It was here at Belmont on a turf course that was labeled good. And you can see, Greg, she angles out when getting room. She looked to have some horse at the quarter pole, and she takes dead aim at the heavy favorite, was just unable to get by her, but she ran willingly. There was nothing bad about this performance whatsoever. It was a solid effort. She was well clear of Saratoga Treasure, but I thought Saratoga Treasure, even though she was beaten by about, what, three lengths, I thought she could narrow that gap today and you could get a little bit of a price, but Hannah Smile, as legitimate as you can ask for in this spot. 
Meanwhile, the favorite, and there she is on cue here, daughter of Stormy Atlantic for Brad Cox, Dream Passage, Joel Rosario. He was aboard for that win. In fact, aboard for each of her last two wins, which both came on the turf. He's back aboard today. You might not think of this immediately. I've mentioned it before, and I mentioned it to his agent, Ron Anderson, but Joel Rosario just reminds me of Eddie De La Jose. I don't think anyone's been involved in more photo finishes in the last few months in New York than Joel, and he just seems to have that knack for getting there in time, and it happened right here with a huge stretch kick from all the way back to get up in the shadow of the wire. It's just amazing how he has that timing down to perfection. Yeah, if you have the lead in the stretch, you do not want to see him come and actually trying to mow you down. Thing is with her is she's going to need a little bit of racing luck. She comes from so far out of it. You have to have that, and that's what these turf sprints come down to. And that's why I use so many horses here. This is such a tough race. It's difficult to take either two to one or three to one in a spot like this because you know that the circumstances of how things unfold can obviously affect the outcome of the race. So maybe you look for a little bit of a price, and that's what I did. Saratoga Treasure, we, we showed you in the backtrack, she finished three lengths behind Hannah's smile in that June 21st race. And sometimes showing talent early can be the worst thing. She went first time out, and as a result of that, she had to face very, very tough company, being very unseasoned. She's still trying to get that second win of her career and start number six today. But she's shown some ability hitting the board three times. That was a giant win. Got to give a shout-out to Mike Beer, who picked that horse on top in her debut for the Daily Racing Forum last year. That was very impressive. And last time out, I thought she put in a good effort. She's the type that will be finishing well, and like the others that we talked about, will need some racing luck. I like her appearance out there. I think that she is uh, hopefully going to mow them all down. Another one that comes from fairly far out of it. You know, we, we, the five Saratoga, or sorry, the, the six next door, Cirque, she's shown speed in even a little surprisingly when she cut back in distance, sprinting from a mile and a 16th. She was on the lead again. Now the fact that she's fresh, chance that she's the quickest in here? She's pretty quick, but there are going to be some others. Breezy Gal right next door to her is very fast away from there as well, as is Trey Charmant. Trey Charmant is going to probably try to gun. Even though her races show when she's third early a length off the pace, they've been pretty quick. But I like what you said, Greg. When they go route and then go back to sprinting and still show the lead, it means that they mean business because a lot of horses are unable to do that. Well, here's another look at Hannah's smile for Michelle Nevin with more on this four-year-old filly. Let's go to Paula Duca. You know, guys, I was, I was talking about the two, and if you look at the two favorites in here, the two and the nine, they both have gate issues. Now, the nine in here, Hannah Smile, has not been seen since June 21st of this year. But she did actually break well that day. The time before that, she broke seven out of 11. The time before that, she broke 10 out of 10. The time before that, she broke eight out of eight. And you look at her first two starts, she broke dead last. Now, has she cured those issues We'll find out today. She did last time. Now, when we get to the two, like I said before, Dream Passage broke nine and nine, seven to seven, and then mid pack before the claim. But the two times Brad Cox has had her, she is broken dead last. So, what gives here with the two favorites? Well, that, whatever it is with, with Dream Passage, the two, that running style has worked for her the last two times on the turf, even though she's been so far out of it. She's been a winner each of those last two tries. She sure has a very, very strong kick she possesses. And this looks to be the type of field that she could fire against again. I would expect her to be rolling late. And it looks like, you know, we were just talking about the pace before we threw it down to Paul. There are a few that want to go. So it could be a pace that develops and fits their style to set it up for them. As we take a look at Trey Charmont, Jose Lizcano, Linda Rice picked up the second win of her career. Came at Saratoga last time out at five and a half furlongs. Linda's horses, as is usually the case, but in particular the last few weeks have been firing pretty hard. And I think that Trey Charmont is a, a big danger in here. And you're getting a good price at eight to one. As I mentioned, I almost picked her on top. It was a tough debate. Trey Charmont is drawn on the outside, but I think that works to her advantage. She should have everything she needs if good enough. She is on the board at 11 to 1. The other Linda Rice runner being dismissed a little bit. Well, that's 12 to 1. She hasn't shown a ton. She's shown some early speed and backed up in each of her two turf starts. This will be her third try on the grass. You're talking about Breezy Gal, and Breezy Gal uh, comes out of a race where even though she was soundly defeated, the third and sixth place finishers came back to win. There were two wins, a second and a third out of that Breezy Gal heat. Loading up for the first leg of this Naira Betts late pick five. Pool closing in on $100,000.
It has been horse racing's best bet. The value has been incredible. Get involved. Final chances to do so right now. The two dream passage, the nine. Hannah Smile, both going to be coming from off the pace. Can they get the right trip? Let's send it upstairs for the call to kick off the Snyder Betts late pick five. Here's the voice of New York Racing, Larry Colmus. And here's Saratoga Treasure and Ailish taking their spot in the starting gate. Trey Charmal comes forward. And that will leave the last two to load, Cirque and Loon Lake. Loon Lake and David Cohen coming up to complete the line here. Field of 12, all in line and ready for the start. They're off. Shrink had a good beginning, going out to the early lead with Breezy Galloway running in second position. Birthday Gift is out third toward the inside. And then it's Trey Charmon, Loon Lake on the far outside, Citizen Matzo and Cirque, Rock Avenue Road and Ailish. In behind them, tucks in Dream Passage, who's eight lengths from the front and just ahead of Hannah's smile. Saratoga Treasure is last of them all as Shrink heads into the far turn in front. 22.3 the quarter, the lead is a half a length. Breezy Gal, second on the outside, then comes Birthday gift, Loon Lake, Citizen Matzo between horses. A length and a half back to Trey Charmant. Sear Blossom position there on the turn, drops back six lengths off the lead, and then it's Ailish, Hannah's Smile, followed on the inside by Rock Avenue Road. Dream Passage still on hold in behind horses at the rear of the field, along with Saratoga Treasure, and they're into the stretch, 46.5 for the half, and Shrink is still the one to catch here, leads at a length and a half. Breezy Gal, Hannah's Smile, Ailish finishing fast on the outside. Saratoga Treasure coming to with Dream Passage. These two splashing home in the center of the course in the back of the pack. Hannah Smile to catch. Hannah Smile by two and a half. Dream Passage into second late, but Hannah Smile's got it. Hannah Smile to beat Dream Passage. And then it was Ailish and fourth was Saratoga Treasure. Top two choices run one, two in a race that we thought was so wide open in here. A slight second choice is what the nine Hannah Smile goes off as, but she pulls clear of this field for the win. She certainly did. Finished strongly, got a perfect situation up top, and absolutely capitalized. Dream Passage had to wait ever so slightly for some room. I don't believe it made any difference in the ultimate outcome. She might have been a tiny bit closer. It's 9 2 10 5 in today's sixth race. So the fans were spot on with the two two to one shots finishing one two. And early on in this race, it looked like we were headed for a monster upset shrink at 53 to one was leading the way early on all by herself. But in the end, she gets reeled in. Here comes Hannah's smile. Michelle Nevin, Manny Franco team up for the victory here at two to one. So nice nine two ten photo for fourth. Very nice effort, 109.53, the running time, solid. The, the horses that were supposed to show up did, and they ran accordingly, and, and good efforts from both the winner and the runner-up in here. Maybe the five to complete that superfecta. It was close, though. We'll have that for you when we come back. We'll return more stakes, well, stakes action ahead for us next. In fact, back to back to back stakes action. We're also going to talk Robert Bruce. Chilean bread picked up the first grade one win of his career in the Arlington Million. He was back at work this morning as he tunes up for the Joe Hirsch. Stick with us. This three-time Breed of Stakes winning millionaire defeated 20 grade one winners. In the Dixie Stakes, he defeated Canadian champion and horse of the year up with the birds and set a new course record at Saratoga. Now the excitement is building as his first foals have arrived this year. Half to four graded stakes winners, Ironicus, has the speed, class, and bloodlines to become the next great sire by distorted humor. Ironicus, standing at Claiborne Farm. They're off. Bet the horses anywhere, anytime with Naira Bets. Rushes out of there to take the lead. It's easy on your computer or Naira Bets app. Earn valuable reward points on bets. Play in our exclusive promotions and earn cash rebates. Off the turn with the length of the half lead. Sign up now. Bet $200 and get $200. The dramatic finish. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime. NairaBets.com.
Back on Belmont Park Live and our Naira Bets late pick five underway. Hannah's smile kicks things off. Two to one, slight second choice. Career win number three. It was fantastic to hear the crowd noise in the winner's circle. I love when that happens, everyone enjoying themselves. As this four-year-old daughter, a perfect soul, takes care of business out of a century city mare named Drama Mama. There wasn't much drama here. Once the hole opened, she blasted through, and Manny Franco was the perfect passenger. Second choice by about $629. That's it. Uh, California Racing focused on Los Alamitos, and you can play the early pick four in Naira Betts and get a 20% winner's bonus. Today's the last day of the meet to be able to take advantage of that. So Los Al, final day of the meet. Take advantage of that 20% winner's bonus on the early pick four through Naira Betts. Want to give some credit to the winning owners of that last race, Sonny Jim Fitzsimmons Racing and the Breeders as well. Frank and Daphne Wooten, Michelle Nevin, the conditioner. Two wins today for Manny Franco. He's standing by with Paul LaDuca. Yeah, with winning jockey here, Manny Franco on Hannah Smile. And, you know, you, you could have went a little bit wider. You decided to cut the corner a tiny bit to try to find a little bit of a hole. Yeah, Paul, I mean, I, I have a lot of holes under me, so I, I was trying to get the hole, you know, to the clo you know to closer to the rail. Because I know when I ask my filly, she's going to take off because I, I feel it. I, ha I have filly under me. You know, she's been a filly that's actually broken slow in the past, and today she break a little better? She break a little better, and they, they put a decent pace in front, and she run down. Well, you've been riding hot since Saratoga, riding hot since Belmont. What do you think the key has been? Man, work hard. You know how, how the game is, and, you know, and show that you want to win races, and that's all. And I want to thank you again. There was some anxious moments uh, the other way, other day with Junior Alvarado and all of our prayers, and hopefully everything's okay and everything is okay. But how scary of a moment is that? Man, he was super scary, man. He just, in, in, in a second, you know, I'm trying to avoid him, but was, you know, right, you know, close. So yeah. I do my best. Um, I'm glad he's okay. I, he was in the yucks room, and he looked, he looked fine. Well, I'll tell you what, as, as a guy sitting here watching races, you did an amazing job avoiding him. And congratulations on this win. Manny Franco, man, up and coming. Uh, I think he's he's a ride. He's, he's one of the top jockeys on this circuit. A young man is just getting better and better. And Paul brings up a uh, great point to ask that Junior Alvarado again off his mounts again this afternoon. But Manny Franco did a tremendous job, everything he could in his power to try and avoid uh, Junior Alvarado was laying on the ground in a race the other day. And we wish Junior Alvarado all the best as he recovers from that spill. John B. Hettinger is next. Three straight stakes races ahead. This is a mile and eighth over the inner turf. And 55 for trainer Chad Brown. We'll have Javier Castellano aboard. Horse is very, very good. She is. And here's the thing. What you know is going to come from her, she's going to fire. And so... The problem is when you deal with an honest Chad Brown horse, you're going to take the worst of it on the price. Right now she's even money. She'll probably be right around there or four to five at post time. So you have to ask yourself this question. Do I try to fight her? I decided to single her, and I, I think that this is the right spot for a single. That's the decision I made. And, and it's a tough call to make because at a mile and an eighth, you just never know. There's a lot of time for the others to uh, maybe spoil the party. But what can you ask from her? She's won five of 14, almost a half million dollars in earnings. She has been defeated. She was beaten by the one last time, Lady Joan, but La Moneda, who won that race, was outstanding. Here's a look at next weekend's skate stakes schedule and some bursts on the line for the Breeders' Cup. Grade 1 Jockey Club Gold Cup Diversify back in action. The Joe Hirsch Turf Classic, Robert Bruce, among others. Grade 1 Vosburgh, the Pilgrim, that's Sunday, the 30th. Grade 2 Ms. Grillo and the Temperance Hill Invitational. Let's take a look at the probables for the Joe Hirsch and Tom Morley and company with the three-year-old Carrick, that huge upset win on Arlington Million Day. Gonna tackle older horses now. Good for him, that was a fantastic win and a great moment for his career. And Robert Bruce with a, a devastating kick in the Arlington Million. Uh, Greg, this horse was so far back. In fact, he was backing up a little on the backstretch. I was wondering what the story was and the story was clarified right about here. One horse beat at this point you're facing grade one runners, and he runs them all down, including his stable mate, Almanar, as he picks up the first grade one since he came here in the States, obviously a multiple group one winner in Chile. He had some trouble in his previous race, and it was nice to see him come back and uh, get the big money in the Arlington Million. And getting 
Little work in again with his horse he just finished ahead of, a stablemate Almanar. Robert Bruce on the inside here on this work. This was earlier today, five furlongs. Robert Bruce went 101. At least two just cruising through the stretch. A nice little maintenance drill for two very classy individuals who are familiar rivals and have looked at each other now from each side. And uh, Almanar wondering what he needs to do to get by this guy. Looking forward to that, Joe Hirsch. That is a loaded field. And again, spot on the line for those who have not yet qualified for the Breeders' Cup Turf. Ms. Grillo Probables and a bunch of new faces that we've seen, including Newspaper of Record, who was sensational at Saratoga. That was an amazing, that race was official going into the first turn. Newspaper of Record got a great position and then just look at her with a gorgeous stride and a just supreme class through the lane. Word was out about this one, about being really good before she ever made her debut. She was sent off as the favorite and she more than lived up to the billing, winning by more than six lengths at first asking for, of course, Chad Brown set a new record at the meet for wins, Clarovich Stables, your leading owner, and Irad Ortiz Jr. won the jockey title as well, but she's, uh, she's special. We'll see if she could take that next step here and start number two coming up next weekend. Here she was earlier today. On the outside, dog tag working there on the inside. Another promising performer. She worked five furlongs in 101 and three. And again, she's getting ready for career start number two. And it's uh, she, she's the type that you start thinking breeders cup about. So this is the step you have to take. They don't often win, Greg, by that kind of margin in the debut, especially on the grass. So for her to accomplish that uh, in such emphatic fashion. The uh, future is very bright for her, and uh, the future might be dim for her competition. There was there was a little bit of buzz about her before she ran. After she ran, everybody was talking about that, about that performance that afternoon. So looking forward to seeing her back in action for start number two to see what she can do and she could build off that performance. Still to come, we get into stakes action. John B. Hettinger is next, and that is the Philly to beat. 55. She is the 6-5 to five favorite on the board. For Chad Brown, who can seem to do no wrong right now at Belmont, Javier Castellano gets the return call. We'll be back with the Hettinger next. His record-breaking accomplishments on the racetrack paved his way here to the stall of legends. Now retired to stud, we welcome the dawning of a new era as this esteemed champion hopes to stake his claim to immortality. His blazing speed and striking good looks have been passed down to his remarkable first folds. Foals that will carry the flag of their famous father and one day hope to break records of their own. Medication free and undefeated in sprint competition. Run happy, standing at Cleveland Farm. How do New York breads perform? They win in world-class company. From grade one races in Dubai, where New York sired New York bread, mind your biscuits, won the Golden Shaheen for a second time. To Belmont, adding to his status as the richest New York bread with a close second in the Met Mile. The Belmont Festival saw two more New York breads become millionaires. Four-star crook in the New York Stakes and world record setter disco partner with a repeat victory in the Jiper. New York breads, get with the program. The final furlong, the teacups is coming to with a rush on the far outside. Four star crook coming to. Four star crook coming the best. Four star crook has emerged up top here and is going to pull away and win from the teacups. Four star crook has found her best stride. She's got a lot of ground to make up. She's six lengths behind, but she's coming and she's coming fast. Four star crook just blew right by them. 
And from the back of the pack, Aknaughty is trying to get second. Four Star Crook has done it. Now well, that was back-to-back -back wins for Four Star Crook for trainer Chad Brown in the John B. Hatton during the win last year. She was over 20 lengths back at one point. She would still win by three and a half lengths. It took a long time for Chad Brown to finally say, you know what, she might be up to better company. That was her ninth win in her last 10 starts coming in. Finally proved when he did put her in against better, more than up to the challenge. She had a win over sister Charlie in the grade two New York, and then a couple of close seconds in grade one company. Daughter of the great Freud, who just continues to develop these outstanding New York breads. So let's go back to the Yaddo. It was back on August 24th at Saratoga. Lady Joan, she had stolen a race at Saratoga on the front end. Earlier in the meet, she tried to do it again in the Yaddo. She would just get caught. 55 was right behind her. And 55 fired, but it was La Moneda's race this day, and she's been in such sharp form, and she puts her head down when it counts. I thought Lady Joan was very game holding second there. I believe the tables will be turned this afternoon, but you can't fault Lady Joan. It's not like she did anything wrong. She was on the lead the whole way, and she held off that heavy favorite even in the closing stages once she had been apprehended by La Moneda. There she is, and she poses a big threat right back against 55 and the rest of this field because she has imposing speed. She is drawn inside, and that becomes even more of an issue the fact that we're on the inner turf course and the way this starts here at a mile and an eighth, that turn comes up almost immediately so she can really get some separation if she does open up. You know, the interesting part of her past performance is you look at her last three races where she's been on the lead at the eighth pole in each of those starts. The one that she did win was the furthest distance, a mile and three-eighths. So the distance of nine furlongs, although she's never raced at this distance, is no issue whatsoever. She's a big threat. And right now, four to one is an extremely fair price from a five to two morning line. Meanwhile, there's a look at Feeling Bossy. Now, she owns a victory over 55 in her career. In fact, they've traded blows with each other. This is a look back to the Mount Vernon back in late May when she got her victory by a neck over 55, and War Canoe is in this race today. Yeah, and she held on stubbornly, as you can see. She's put to the drive by Ortiz, but it, uh, she finds the wire. You think, you talk about a filly that looked like she was about to get caught, but uh, she just kept fighting, showed some tenacity late, and fended off the competition fair and square. And that's where you have to start asking yourself the question, do I take even money on 55? Because 55 is not one at this distance, 55 has been defeated, but the thing about her, she's always there. And uh, you I, know I, she's going to make that late run. She'll be there. And, and you don't always know that's going to be the case with the others. Yeah, as for feeling bossy, there she is again. Since that victory we showed you, falling off form just a little bit with more on this group. We're going to send it downstairs for a paddock report. It's brought to you by Hillendale Farm. Now standing Curlin for $150,000. Let's check in with Paula Duca. Thanks, Craig. We'll check in right in with the uh, favorite in here, 55, the four-year-old filly here by Get Stormy. Her last race in the Yadu, I, I thought it wasn't that bad. Loma Lamaneta is a very, very good animal. And you know what? She does like this turf course here at Belmont. Five for six in the money with a couple Ws and over a yielding turf course beating Kadura. Kadura ended up wiring a field after that. So 55 is the one to beat. But I get people's concerns um she always brings her a game but sometimes she likes to hang around the pack when it comes towards the end the one lady joan obviously the speed in this race and she seems like she's always the rodney dangerous field doesn't she she never really gets bet at the window but she always brings her a game 14 to 1 she almost uh Wired a field, and look who she got beat by, La Moneda, twice in her last effort. La Moneda really had a stretch to beat her, but the time before that, she was able to get away and and beat Violet Blue. So, uh, to me, I, I thought she could be a horse. If you let get away, she can get very, very tough in, in, in certain spots. Uh, Munchkin Money, the four, I thought was an interesting horse uh, for Brian Lynch. You know, this horse ran very, very well, and two of the four wins by this mare by Freud are here at Belmont, and I think that could help her. She seems like she might like the sweeping turns. Now, I get it. They were at six furlongs, and they were at seven furlongs. Now she's got to go a mile and an eighth. This is a whole different ball game. Um, she's gone two turns before, though, when she was under the Chad Brown care, but that was in September of 2016, but what happened? She got the job done. I, I know it was against a very, very weak field, but she got the job done, and then let's Let's get to War Canoe, my last one. I thought that she looked best in the paddock. These Gary Contessa horses keep on looking better and better. 
obviously put over her head in the Diana two back. But last time out, I thought it was a better run fourth than look, considering Lady Joan and Laminata just laid first and second the whole way around the trace track. So maybe a little tricky race here, guys. And Warkanoo has been a, a very, very solid horse for Gary Contessa, and he is having an outstanding meet. He was terrific with his two-year-olds at Saratoga, and it is carried over here to Belmont as we get a look at Jose Ortiz. He'll be aboard Tizel for trainer James Bond. Take a quick break. We'll be back. Back up Belmont Park Live on this Sunday afternoon. We have three straight stakes races coming up, including the great two gallant bloom ahead. You can bet them all by getting signed up and started with Naira Bets. Take advantage of a $200 new member bonus when you use the promo code Belmont Live to bet any track, anywhere, anytime. Going to get a look at this field here in the post parade coming up for the John B. Hattinger. Mile and an eighth on the inner turf. And Lady Joan, the speedster, gets the inside draw to kick things off. Trained by Phil Serpy. Still at that four to one price. And as Paul had mentioned, she doesn't usually get the respect at the windows. In her last four wins, she has not been favored. Even when getting well backed, she is very honest and dangerous. We'll see if Bonita Bianca puts any pace pressure on Lady Jones. She's coming out of sprints on dirt. This is her turf debut for Jason Service. Jason does a fantastic job first time turf. For me, it's mostly in sprint races. This is a, a big step up. If they're able to do it, I'd have to salute. Munchkin money, she has taken place. She was 15 to one in the morning line, all the way down to six to one now for Brian Lynch. Continued willingly to the wire last time. This is the third start off the layoff. Many like that angle. 
Tizel looked like she was going to win this race last year until four-star crook ran her down. Doesn't come in with as sharp a form this year for James Bond. She needs to take a step forward, but if you do look back, you're getting a big price at 10 to 1. Here's another Jason Service runner, Feeling Bossy. She is a five-time winner on this turf course. I ride Ortiz Jr. rides. She loves it here, and that's the angle that you'd have to take if you want to back her at 8-1. to one. And here's the old professional war canoe Paula Duca was talking about, 9-1 to one for Gary Contessa. She was in the grade one Diana a couple of starts ago. She's back to reality the last two. Looks like her game face, though, on this afternoon here. Here's the 9.55, and this is the Philly to beat for trainer Chad Brown. Daughter of Get Stormy. Out of a Brahms mare. Brahms was a very nice runner himself with beautiful pedigree. And uh, her record will go over a half million if she gets it done today. And the other pace pressure here to the one lady, Joan. Conquest hard candy, Joe Bravo, will be aboard for Jimmy Ryerson. Has some speed, went coast to coast last time out. and Pretty easy victory as well. So that's your field here for our first of three Back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back stakes races here coming up. We have some jockeys, including this young man right here, Manny Franco, who we just saw win race number six and start off the Naira Betts Late Pick 5 that are approaching some big-time milestones. Manny, close to number 1,000 in his young career. Luis Saez, 26 wins away from 2,000. And then the big numbers. Javier Castellano, 18 away from 5,000 in his career. And Hall of Famer John Velasquez, 24 wins away from 6,000. Manny Franco has made such an impact here in New York that I, I was surprised to see that he's only coming up on 1,000 right now. Yeah. And I, I'm not saying only to, to uh, do anything but compliment the man, but he just seems like he wins so many races, and I don't think 2,000 will be that far away. This kid can ride, and he is an outstanding finisher. I love guys who in the final stages you can just count on to push that head down on the wire. Very kind of quiet young man, just goes about his business, but you can tell that he puts in the work, he studies, and he absolutely knows what he is doing out there, and he has really risen on this circuit. So it'll be interesting to see what the three Bonita Bianca does here from a pace standpoint in this race in her turf debut. This is the one everyone's going to try and hold off, though, and deal with 55, no question. She is the one to beat. We know she's going to put in that devastating late turn of foot that she has for Chad Brown, and Chad Brown's been winning just about everything here at Belmont the last few days. you got to deal with two things with Chad Brown. Either let him beat you or... Enjoy his victory and take the short price. And that's what I've decided to do here. I'm going to say that 55 gets there. She's lost three of her last five races by a combined less than length and a half. So that's, that's how good she is. She's always there. She'll give you what she has. The question for her is a good question. If you're going to take four to five, you want them to have done it, quote unquote, right? She hasn't won at the distance. You look at some of, of her losses, months. too. New Money Honey, Proctor's Ledge Uni, who just came back and won at Presley again yesterday. She has tackled some big time company as we take a look here at Munchkin Money. And this is a horse, a Philly, or five year old mare, I should say. It's kind of on the rise a little bit. It seems like she has really started to get better later in her career. This will be her third start of her five year old campaign, and I really could argue her best two races have been her last two starts. Nice effort last time out when finishing second, well clear of the rest. And as noted by America's turf authorities, chart colors, good energy late. And that's important. It's not just that she was clear of the rest, but she had plenty of gas in the tank when they finished. And she's had some good efforts right here at Belmont Park. Yeah, she had a four length score. at seven furlongs here at Belmont. This is a new class of company though that she is dealing with so that's the big question for munchkin money can she handle this step up to face these kind of runners which she has not really dealt with in her career before as we take a look again here war canoe dylan davis for gary contessa let's face plenty of lady joan out of trouble feeling bossy 55 all of them she's seen plenty of times a lot of that the dark print in your daily racing form showing that these are all friends with one another friends and foes at the same time and on her best day, I mean, she fits with this group. No question. Three starts back, a nice victory, beating out of trouble. And look, they thought enough of her to give her a shot in the Diana. Yes, she was almost 50 to 1. But if you look back at her form last winter, she was rattling off nice, nice performances in the claiming rank. She has certainly come a long way to earn a quarter of a mil. And as you mentioned, Greg, Gary Contessa's horses are firing, and you have to take those things into consideration as the price goes down to 3 to 5 on 55. I'm a little surprised Lady Joan isn't 
lower than nine to two, but I'm not surprised to see the big favorite here. This is the surprise here to me on the board. Uh, feeling bossy. I, obviously, your form went a little bit south after she had that victory in the Mount Vernon, uh, and Jason Service had been s on such a roll, especially at Belmont. So that perfect sting. Oh, that was a tough group that she faced that day. You maybe can excuse that. She was only beat three and a half lengths, but how do you kind of forgive that Yado? She's almost double her morning line right now. Yeah, she just uh, she didn't have it that day, but she's back to her favorite course. The, the record speaks for itself. Stats don't lie. She has won five of ten here. That is a big price, and usually if a Jason Service horse is 11 to 1, they might as well be 111 to 1. Yeah, he takes action at the windows. Do they His ever. runners get bet, and he had been just on an incredible roll. All Belmont long, cooled off a little bit beginning of Saratoga, but then started to heat up again. We'll see if Feeling Bossy can return to form that we saw on the Mount Vernon. Without question, the Philly to beat. It is the 9.55 for trainer Chad Brown, looking for a second win in her last three starts. She is odds on three to five. Let's send it upstairs to the voice of New York Racing for the call of the John B. Hettinger. Here's Larry Colmus. Tizel has moved in with 55, and Hun Conquest Hard Candy coming up to the outside stall. We'll complete the line. They're all in line. They're off in the John Hettinger. And it's Lady Joan who goes straight out to the early lead with feeling bossy. Conquest Hard Candy goes out there three wide with some early foot as well. And then comes Munchkin Money behind them. Tizel is away running in fifth position in the initial stages here. Bonita Bianca is sixth and down on the inside. 55's alongside of her, about seven lengths off the lead. And War Canoe is the trailer as Lady Joan is taken on up front by Conquest Hard Candy. And the two of them will match strides onto the back stretch. And they're cleared two lengths from feeling bossy through a 24. 0.59 opening quarter mile. Munchkin Money follows in fourth, four and a half lengths off the lead, then Tizel, 55 on the outside. Bonita Bianca has got seven lengths to make up, and War Canoe is the trailer. It's Conquest Hard Candy on the outside and Lady Joan at the rail. The two of them locked in early battle here as they continue up the backstretch. And they're two lengths ahead of Feeling Bossy, who tracks them through a half mile in 49.96 seconds. And then it's Munchkin Money, Tizel to the inside. 55 is outside of them with five lengths to make up. And they're followed by the two trailers, Bonita Bianca and War Canoe. So they make their way into the far turn. The battle continues. Lady Joan, Conquest Hard Candy. These two nose to nose into the turn. A length and a half back to Feeling Bossy. Munchkin Money is next. Tizel is down on the inside. 55 is beginning to move, and she's going to go outside of horses, and here she comes now with a four-wide bid while War Canoe will save ground, and the trailer is Bonita Bianca. Three-quarters, 1-14-09. They're into the stretch here. And Conquest Hard Candy's got a slight lead from Lady Joan. 55 is closing on the outside. Then Tizel Munchkin Money is next, and they're coming down to the final 16th, and 50. 55 has taken the lead and is pulling away. Opening up as Munchkin Money takes second late. 55 scores by two and a half. Munchkin Money was second. Lady Joan was third. And Tazell was fourth. Well, Lady Jones plans to steal this race in the front end, win a ride when Joe Bravo on CarQuest Hard Candy decided to keep her company early. 55 just much the best in this race. She had a wide trip, too. She seems to be more effective when she's further back, and that's what happened today. Javier Castellano kept her back. Here she comes in the green silks on the outside, launching a bid. Yes, she was about six wide, but when you're on the best, you might as well go that way, and now she just starts to kick in motoring home very confident handling i don't think that whip's ever going to come out here as she just gobbles up the competition and i'll tell you what lady joan was very game to hold third here and it was a solid effort from munchkin money but a no doubt about it performance from 55. nine four one yeah lady joan hanging in there on the fence despite being pressured every step of the way from card conquest hard candy that big long shot at 40 to one but no doubt about your winner in here 55 picks up the sixth win of her career. Her third here at Belmont. And Chad Brown continuing to collect stakes victories here at Belmont. Look at this girl go at the end. She's just pretty much toying with the competition. Right there, Javier gives her one last little nudge to remind her that, that she's lost a couple of photos recently. And she puts an exclamation point on the W. An impressive performance. Well, we saw... Four-star crook move in against better company after a couple of wins here. Is that next for 55? We're gonna take a break.
grade one winner, Lee, traveled the world competing against the best of his generation. A graded stakes winner on both dirt and turf, he set a new track record in the grade one Don Handicap and retired with earnings of more than $2.3 million. Now his flashy first crop yearlings are turning heads with a striking resemblance to their internationally successful sire. The sky's the limit for this promising young stallion. Lee, standing at Claiborne Farm. Back on Belmont Park Live, and this was not even close. 55, much the best here in the John B. Hedinger. A four-year-old daughter by Get Stormy out of the Brahms Mare Sub, owned by Peter Brandt, who has another nice little distaffer on the grass. Chad Brown is the winning conditioner, and she is over the half-million-dollar mark, 55. Bred by Empire Equines LLC. Congratulations to them. They have to be very happy right now watching her progress. That was an impressive performance. She's been in graded stakes company in the past. I wonder if she gets a shot again with this type of performance down the line. She certainly has earned it, but keep in mind, Mr. Brown's got a few that would be standing in her way that maybe he doesn't want her to see just yet. So 55, Javier Castellano, Peter Brand has mentioned, Chad Brown. Winning connections here as we kick off stakes action. And we've got a lot more to come, including the great two-gallant bloom as we take a look at the Naira Bats Late Pick 5 follow-along. Up and over $103,000 in that pool hand. His smile, slight, slight second choice. Taking the first leg of the sequence and now an odds-on favorite. Have to believe a lot of people singled 55, so most people are going to be alive, but we have seen it time and time again. Get a couple of prices late, you still have an outstanding payoff possibility here on that Naira Betts pick five. Well, Chad Brown, he's got good reason to be smiling with all the winning he has been doing. He had four wins to start off the card yesterday. He added a fifth, and he has doubled up on the next closest to him here with 12 victories. And at the bottom of that list there, you see George Weaver. He unleashed a very nice two-year-old Colt by Candy Ride uh, on the third race today named Vacoma. He was bet hard and ran accordingly. Well, that man right there, Chad Brown, leading the way, though. He's got the favorites in the next two races coming up as well, including the great two, Gallant Bloom. He'll send out a pair in this group with Lewis Bay, who is the 9-5 to five morning line favorite, currently second choice on the board. He also sends out Your Love, who is three for four at Belmont. And this is the acid test of acid tests for her. She's going into deep water today, but she is fired every time. And as we had just mentioned, uh, about his other horse in here, Lewis Bay, had only been off the board one time in her life. That was in the test. Guess what? Your love has missed the money one time in the test. So now they get to meet, and your love faces a tall test, but you get a very nice price on a Chad Brown runner. Grade two, gallant bloom. It is coming up. We're also going to talk thunder snow when we return. The Dubai World Cup winner won that race in track record time. Arrived early Friday morning here at Belmont ahead of his test coming up next weekend. We'll be back.
Mastery, retired undefeated, winning his four starts by a combined 20 lengths. A six-figure September sale purchase, he won impressively in his two-year-old debut at Santa Anita. From there, he captured the Grade 3 Bob Hope Stakes and completed his juvenile campaign with a dominant performance in the Grade 1 Los Alamitos Futurity. At three, the top-rated son of Candy Ride sizzled in the San Felipe, running a 105 buyer and winning by open lengths. Mastery, new for 2018 at Claiborne Park. They're off. Get the horses anywhere, anytime with Naira Vets. Rushes out of there to take the lead. It's easy on your computer or Naira Vets app. Earn valuable reward points on bets. Play in our exclusive promotions and earn cash rebates. Off the turn of the lead for the half lead. Sign up now. Bet $200 and get $200. The dramatic finish. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime. NairaBets.com. Inside the final 300, Thunder Snows out by three, four lengths over West Coast. Down the outside, Forever Unbridled, look to Hitch. Then fabulous Thunder Snow, well clear in the Dubai World Cup. Thunder Snow, the Derby winner, is racing away. Trying to get there is West Coast battling away, but a brilliant performance. Thunder Snow, a massive upset in the Dubai World Cup. Thunder Snow, now a Group 1 winner on turf and on dirt. That was a, a win at track record time of the Dubai World Cup, but still some question marks about it. North America, who would have been the pace setter in that race, did not break well at all. That had a huge impact on the running of that race, but still, he held off West Coast, and now we're going to see him here next weekend in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. That was a home team victory there. Now he's on putting on his road jersey. And uh, he's had some issues here in the States, so he is certainly no cinch. He's going to have some uh, nice competition to fight with here, including I, uh, Diversify, who is just on fire. I assume you're referring to his Kentucky Derby when yes. he, he was a bit a bit <laughs> of a bad actor, to put it mildly. But uh, his team says he has traveled exceptionally. He's always been a good traveler, so no issues there as we take a look at him earlier this morning here at Belmont. And it's going to be quite a throwdown with Diversify and uh, some others. And Mendelssohn going to be lining in this group as well. Uh, tremendous field for the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Very exciting to see him out here again. And look, they, they want to get it done right here. And, uh, and then point to the Breeders' Cup Classic for the ultimate redemption. Not, and not only did you know North America not go with him on the front end, too. He got away with really slow fractions in that race. So we shall see in the end. It was a track record, so you can't take that away from him. He has certainly bounced back to be a very good performer after what people kind of wrote him off after that Kentucky Derby. Here's a look at the Breeders' Cup winning. You're in schedule. A lot more to go here at this Belmont Park champ, uh, Fall Championship meet. George Turf, Fosberg Jockey Club, Gold Cup, and then the following weekend, the Champagne Flower Bowl Futurity and the Frizettes. A oh, big day yesterday at Parks. Yes, indeed. Some monster performances, a little bit of drama no and question. controversy. Drama's as, the right word. As well. We're going to start out, though, with the gallant Bob and take a look at, at what Forenze Fire did. He was brilliant here on this racetrack in the Dwyer when he beat Mendelssohn, who made his return to the States that afternoon. Just a sensational effort, and he followed it up with this performance coming off a, a third at Saratoga. He rocketed out of the gate in the gallon, Bob, and then he really had to fight in the final stages. And don't use the word fight lightly, as bite you can or see. Fight. It was a fight that almost turned into a serious bite. By the way, Barbara Livingston with an outstanding Boom, photograph right there. of that little attack 
that was made on Firenze Fire, but a solid performance from the winner. Oh, take another look here at the head-on. Savaged in the stretch, as if you don't have enough to deal with on a thousand pound animal going this fast. Take a look at Ortiz right afterward to take a peek back like, what? <laughs> I mean, you gotta watch where your hands are on those reins. That could have been dicey. Crazy stuff. In the cotillion, this is where we had all the drama. Monomoy girl seeking a fifth consecutive grade one. Wow, mile and a 16th and she is drifting in, she's drifting out, and in the end, we had a disqualification. Monomoy girl, you can see, has the lead. She's going to start to come out now, and Midnight Bisu, familiar rivals once again, starts closing that gap. They come toward the wire together. Monomoy girl will hold on. After a jockey's objection from Mike Smith, the order of finish reversed. And, and you take a look, it's pretty dramatic here when you take a look at the head-on. Drifting all the way inside, so the Midnight Bisu has to take another path how many lanes out does she float her here? She floats several. Uh, Paul LaDuca earlier, who has an eagle eye, said seven. I'm not sure if, what the number was, but in the end, there was a disqualification. And as is always the case, particularly now with social media, there were many people on both sides of the argument, just as is almost off, always the case. I think he said 70, and I think he was exaggerating. But yeah, he, <laughs> she was floated out real wide. Meanwhile, what a comeback effort from McKinsey. Again, this was Bob Baffert's derby horse before anybody really knew about Justify. We'd not seen this horse since the San Felipe back in early March. Welcome back. What a tremendous return. And we've seen this from Baffert so many times. When he points for a certain race, you have to just trust the trainer intent and the trainer knowledge. And that is exactly what he did with McKinsey. But still, going into this race off that layoff with the question marks, Greg, uh, it is just yet another feather in Bob's cap. And this is a, a win that is extremely sentimental and emotional for all of the connections because the horse, of course, named for the late general manager of Los Alamitos, Brad McKenzie. Um, I know that both uh, Carl Watson and Paul Whiteman were in the winner's circle. They were very close with Brad, and they guided him into the winner's circle. They, they wanted to have the ultimate story in the Kentucky Derby. Now they'll be aiming for the Breeders' Cup Classic. What a comeback. Yeah, great to see this horse carry on the legacy of us. Bob Baffert was obviously very close to Brad as well. The only blemish on this horse's resume, race that we showed you on this network when he got DQ'd out of a win against Bolt Doro. Bob Baffert not happy with that decision at all, but uh, this horse, maybe he's come back even better than what he was early on in the Triple Crown Trail. Great to Gallant Bloom. Coming up next, there's Lewis Bay for Chad Brown, the one to beat. We'll be back. on your computer or Naira Bets app. Yeah. Earn valuable reward points on bets, play in our exclusive promotions, and earn cash rebates. Oh, the turn to the for the half lead. Sign up now. Bet $200 and get $200. The dramatic finish. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime. NairaBets.com.
Back on Belmont Park Live, there's the voice of New York Racing. That is Larry Colmes. Hi, Larry. No binocular stand in there. He, he's, he's, <laughs> he's got it. He actually used to use a binocular stand, I believe. There is voice each and every day of Saratoga and here at Belmont. Tremendous job. Get signed up, get started, play along. $200 new member bonus when you use that code Belmont Live. I could never do Larry's job for a multitude of reasons. He has a lot of talent to do what he does, but I just I, don't, I do not like heights. I could not be in that space. Did you enjoy the movie High right Anxiety now. with Mel Brooks? I did not. Let's send it downstairs to Paula Duke of Paddock Report, brought to you by Hillendale Farm, now standing Byron for $15,000. <laughs> Thanks, Wolfie. We'll start off with your favorite in here, Lewis Bay. And what has she done wrong on the racetrack? 16 starts, six wins, five seconds, and four thirds. And her only race where she was off the board, she was fourth. So an honest, honest mare in here. And I'm really surprised at her price, especially when she's run five times here. She's got three wins and she's got two seconds. But are a lot of people putting credence into that last race where she barely beat the two still there? Still there, a, a lightly raced filly compared to Lewis Bay, the five-year-old mare, stumbled out of the gate and ran into a freak in Marley's Freedom, the Bob Baffert runner. So do we take those two runners out of that race and dis distinguish, okay, that's the best race because obviously Marley's Freedom is very good. Maybe that's the case. I also think the four in here, Highway Star is very interesting. And the reason why is you just cannot dismiss a mare that has $1.1 million in the bank. Eight wins here, um, lifetime. Eight and for 19, excuse me, lifetime. Five wins here at Belmont. And it seems like her last three races, she's in very good form. She just got beat um, by Lewis Bay by many last time. But she was really pace compromised that day. And then Union Strike, the six. I thought made a very good appearance here in the paddock. And Mick and Wendy Ruiz have made the trek here from California to watch their daughter of Union Rags run the second time in the Steve Asmussen barn. I would really look for her to improve, guys. Yeah, we'll see if she could take a step up here. She is on the board three to one. She's taken plenty of play right here as we take a look at Irad Ortiz Jr. will be aboard Lewis Bay for Alpha Delta Stables. And Lewis Bay, there she is, five to two right now. So pace-wise, she's not going to have to deal with a Finley's Lucky Charm this time around, who's ultra quick. And is ultra she on the tough. lead? She's going to be very prominent, let's say that. She's definitely going out there. And if you look at this field past performance lines, you would have to think she's going to be right there. But it's not even the number that Finley's Lucky Charm was running early on. It's just the fact that it was her. And so, and then Marley's Freedom, who is just an absolute freak, blew right by this competition like they were standing still. So I, I don't I don't hold it against her, although you still have to give still there a lot of credit, because as Larry Colmas had noted in his call of that race, at the eighth pole, she was kind of looking for room and didn't have it. And then once she got it, she finished up well. When it's a rematch, though, sometimes you give the edge to the one who did the early dirty work. And that would be Lewis Bay. Well, here's the insurance policy for Chad Brown. This is his other runner in the field, four-year-old filly by Flatter. She is three for four on this Belmont track. Her only defeat, she ran second on a muddy surface. She's coming off a window in the shine again at seven furlongs at Saratoga. I'm a fan of your love. I like the way she took care of this race. Granted, this is not the same group she's facing today, but you can't hold her record against her. All she does is fire. She usually runs two races at a time and then takes a little break. That's exactly the case again today, a little more than the six weeks necessary for the one line to show up in your past performance lines. Why not? She's drawn well outside, and you're getting a price. I'm taking a little shot here, but I firmly understand, and in the pick five, I'm using the logicals, which are still there in Lewis Bay. I'm a little surprised at the money that keeps coming for Union Strike, but this is the second time she's in the care of trainer Steve Asmussen, and Steve's one of the best in the world, and that's why you get this kind of respect. Yeah, she is the sixth filly in here, and she is half her morning line. Three to one right now. As we go back and take a look at the grade three vagrancy, this was at Belmont back on May the 12th. Herbie's Penny would win this race. Holiday Disguise would run third. This was a very solid performance from Kirby's Penny back in May. I remember this race vividly, and she was uh, impressive, and then she came back last time out in the honorable miss, 
and uh, Finley's Lucky Charm just simply outclassed her, and Vertical Oak was well ahead of her, too. Time for our post rate is brought to you by OCD Pellets. Build stronger bone with their two-in-one bone and joint supplement. For more information, visit OCDPellets.com. Here is still there for Dane Kabiski was second to Marley's Freedom in the ballerina. He's done a good job with this daughter of Union Rags, and she has that little white face to remind people of her daddy. Kirby's Penny at 8-1. to one. She could be the one pressuring Lewis Bay early for Wesley Ward. She's quietly earned $360,000 plus. Excellent claim for $40,000. Lewis Bay, here's our favorite for Chad Brown. She is the high weight in the field, carrying 121 pounds, six-time winner from 16 starts. She is the deserving favorite and will be at post time. She's got no uh, major names, so to speak, in here. So she is the marquee in this race. Highway starts. She's trying to defend her title here. She won this race last year. She's coming off a little bit of an issue. She wanted to go in the ballerina, had a bit of a fever, and had to scratch out of that race. She's getting some support, and she should. She's uh, in half her morning line a little less than half at 9-2. And look, her record speaks. You said it. She won this race last year. Joel Rosario on holiday disguise for Linda Rice. When she fires, she's dangerous and she's fresh and we'll be picking it up in the final stages. Big Here's price. The one taking all the money in here. Three to one down from six to one morning line. Union strike for Steve Asmussen. I wonder what I'm missing here to see her this low in this spot. For example, the one right next to her I would certainly prefer, but that's why they run the race. Here's your love, the other Chad Brown filly, the flatter filly with Javier Castellano. She's coming off that win we showed you in the shine again. Time to find out what she's made of, and there is no shortage of talent for her to fight against today. She's my top selection. So six to one for your love outside. Meanwhile, still there. This is the rematch again we talked about from the ballerina between her and Louis Bay, the three. For still there, lightly raced. This is just her sixth career start in the three times in her career she's been on a fast track, a winter breaker maiden in her debut. She wins at Laurel in a stakes race and then doesn't get out of the gate cleanly in that ballerina. She winds up second behind Marley's Freedom. Giant performance last time out. There's, you know, the only drawback for her is the fact that she had to draw the rail in this spot. It's something that she has not had to deal with yet in her career. But this is the type of filly I would normally pick right on top because I love lightly raced horses against more experienced ones when they're on the upswing like her. She's done very little wrong. you got to draw a line right through that turf race, and then her only loss comes in the grade one ballerina when running into an absolute Amazon and not having a good beginning either. It seems like she's, she's the up-and-comer here, certainly in this group. As we look at Union Strike, move to the Steve Asmussen barn. And she was fourth, beat five lengths in that grade one ballerina first start under his care. Trying to find her place. She came in from California, and she's done a lot of shipping. And um, I, I'm only guessing because I have no idea. Only sheets I follow are right under my blanket. So maybe it's a sheet thing. I, I don't know what else it could possibly be to have her so low in the odds. Well, she, look, she had quality, obviously. Second start of her career, she wins the grade one Delmar debutante. So they, they figured she was pretty good. She did that as a maiden. Yeah, that was a great race. Figured that she had some ability early on in her career. So maybe she's just had some hiccups along the way. We'll see. But she has not lived up to I, what expectations probably would have been off that performance since. Let's find out more about her. Send it downstairs to Paula Duca. Thanks, guys. Uh, uh, very well to be joined here by Mick Ruiz. I actually very good friends with his son, Mick uh, Ruiz Jr. And knowing you, you are a man with a plan. Why is this horse out here in New York? Well, the races seem to be better out here for him. And who else could, you know, I would like to train her than Hall of Famer Steve Asmussen. You know, it, it's been a break for Wendy and I, you know, the with Bolt going to the Derby. It was like six months of living in his world. Now we get to enjoy, you know, watching Shelby's got the stable in Southern California and Bolt and Junior out here with Steve. So we're just kind of taking a little bit of a break and starting to enjoy it with them. Um, we've been with our farm in Lexington and we got a, our mares and babies growing up over there. So just it's just fun to take a little break and watch you know, the horses and not have to be in the heat of the moment. You talk about Shelby, you know, she won a grade one with this this filly and there's been some hiccups here and there. Um, you think she's ready to take this step? 
oh yes she is you know you know hey when when you're it's hard to work for your dad or your kids work for you you know you want to be harder on them and you know they're smarter than you so we're, we're all past that now and you know um, it's just it's a real joy to have her training our horses and boy she knows what she's doing she's she's twice the horse person i am that's for sure well it's good to have you and your better half wendy out here and good luck to you guys She's four to one on the board. Her second start here in the state of New York after going upstate to Saratoga and trying top class company in the ballerina. And look, she hadn't started in a few months since that time. That was as good a company as you could hope to go against Marley's Freedom. Just freaked that day. So we'll see a second start under Hall of Famer's barn. Maybe she improves. I, I like what Mick had to say there because he's enjoying life and. He's had a lot of success in the business world, and now he's not being, uh, I guess for lack of a better expression, grinded out with the day-to-day -day activity with the horses, and he's got them in good care, and he has a good taste in picking Steve Asmussen to train this filly. Six to one on the other Chad Brown runner, but never dismiss a horse for course, and that is absolutely what this daughter of Flatter is here, your love. Three for four, only defeat a second-place performance. She's going to get a stocking trip here in this spot. She won the first two starts of her career, and they both came at Belmont. Thankfully, she has no idea who the competition is. She can't read the racing form. All she knows how to do is run and run effectively. First and second throughout her career, she looked outstanding on the track, as did her stablemate, the favored Lewis Bay. I expect, as usual, here's some real insight for the fans. I expect Chad Brown to make his presence felt in this race. When it's, does he not? It's going to be interesting, too. I mean, seven furlongs. She shortens up to six and a half today. She's very quick. How aggressive Irad Ortiz Jr. is going to be early. She's She's got the speed. She can do it. And, you know, she has uh, gone. She's run longer distances. But when she comes back to seven eights, her speed is very prominent. There's not an abundance of early lick in here. Kirby's Penny, by the way, that I had mentioned earlier, what a great claim. It was almost like a... Uh, it, it was a claim back by Wesley Ward. It was a, a real good claim for 20. They came back for 40, and Wesley said, oh, I will take that back, please. <laughs> Sorry about that, Mr. Spellman. We didn't mean that. And then she has rattled off some nice wins. So Including Kirby's a great been, three. Yeah, good for them because that had to be a sick feeling. When they saw her in for 40, like, look, let's take the $20,000 bath and get back to work with her. Oh, yeah, Wesley Ward, put, we're talking about the two Kirby's penny. He put her in for a claiming tag. She winds up airing in that race, winning by 10. And immediately, Wesley Ward knew he made a mistake there. Got her back very next start for double for 40000 And then she's gone on, of course, to win a grade three, among other victories. So we'll see. She's the primary pace pressure, it would appear, to the three Lewis Bay, who is the eight to five favorite, the three horse here for Chad Brown. It is the grade two gallant bloom and a rematch between the three Lewis Bay and the one still there. Send it upstairs to the voice of New York Racing for the call. Here's Larry Colmas. Union Strike has taken her position in the gate, and here comes your love. And Javier Castellano, when they go in, they're all in line. They're off in the gallant bloom. Union strike slow to get going. A good beginning here for Kirby's Penny, who goes out to lead them with Lewis Bay and Highway Star right behind. Still there is fourth early on, four lengths from the front. Your love, holiday disguise in Union Strike. Up the back stretch, Kirby's Penny the leader from Lewis Bay and Highway Star. The three of them all right together as they race for the turn. That first quarter mile is up in 22.57 seconds. Break of two and a half to Still There, who's inside of Your Love on the turn. Holiday disguise in Union Strikers side by side too. And they're six lengths off the lead. Around the far turn. Kirby's Penny a narrow advantage here with Lewis Bay right up alongside and Highway Star outside of them. The three of them coming toward the top of the stretch ran a half in 45.09 seconds and still there is getting going while Union Strike rides the rail and begins to move too and your love is coming up on the outside. They're into the final furlong. The one to catch is Kirby's Penny who leads the way over Your Love, who's closing on the outside. Union Strike is coming up the rail. Highway Star is in behind them. Here's Your Love on the outside of Kirby's Penny and Union Strike, driving through on the inside, and Union Strike's going to do it. Riding that rail to victory over Your Love, and then came Kirby's Penny still there, and Holiday Disguise. A golden trip along the rail, shortest way around the racetrack in Union Strike. 
for Mick and Wendy Ruiz with a victory here in the great two gallant bloom. What a beautiful trip after a rough beginning. She certainly earned it, did Union Strike. Look at her riding the rail in the green silks. The horse on the far outside in the red cap is Your Love as they're inhaling the top three. And you can see Your Love had dead aim and Union Strike flat outran her along the inside. Solid performance from the winner and the runner up. Union Strike certainly earning this victory. Congratulations as they take the grade two gallant bloom. Top three choices on the board. Do not finish in the money in this race. Six, seven, two, Union Strike. Scrape in that fence. All the way around the racetrack to get this victory here. There you see her down on the inside with that dirty white blaze. And she's gonna find an opening and get up for the victory. Nice, nice ride here from Jose Ortiz. And Javier Castellano did his job. Absolutely, your love looked like she was on her way to victory, but Union Strike out her in a stellar performance. Now we know where all that early money was coming from. She drifts up to six to one at the end and her backers are rewarded. Great interview from Paul. Uh, meeting with Mick beforehand, and he has to be a very happy man right now. Yeah, well done for the Ruiz's getting his stakes victory here. A grade two win in the gallant bloom and union strike. This is the second start under the care of Steve Asbusson. Maybe big, bigger and better things ahead. We'll see what her plans are next, but this is a nice victory. She beats a very good field. Some accomplished runners in this spot. Six, seven, two, one. Back with prices. We'll set up the Ashley T. Cole next. This successful son of AP Indy has sired six millionaires, including Eclipse champion West Coast, a multiple grade one winner and runner up in the $16 million Pegasus World Cup. This year, Flatter is adding even more stakes winners to his outstanding record at stud. In the auction ring, Flatter topped the 2018 Fasing Tipton July seal with a $520,000 yearly. Success on the track, success in the ring. Flatter standing at Claiborne Farm. Back on Belmont Park Live, grade two, gallant bloom, and it goes to Union Strike. Jose Ortiz puts her in great position to get this victory. He really did. That was a beautiful ride, and that's why we see so much success from Jose Ortiz. She did not have a smooth beginning, but he sat calmly and let her roll up the fence. Daughter of Union Rags out of a smart strike mare named Classic Strike. Wendy and Mick Ruiz and Steve Asperson, the winning conditioner. She is yet another who goes over the half million dollar mark on today's show. And she pays $14.40 to her backers. Look at that. Very interesting. She pays more to show than to place. This really got hammered in the win and place show of pools early on. The 6 7 2, I believe one in that four slot still there, but it's all about Union Strike. And the ride from that young man, Jose Ortiz. Eclipse Award winning rider. We take a look at the Naira Betts Late Pick 5 follow along and now we have a little separation. We certainly do and she finishes up right on her morning line of six to one and pays 1440. But in these multi-race 
sequences, as is often the case, people will hone in on the favorites, and therefore you get maybe the equivalent of 10, 12 to 1 on her in this Naira Betts late pick five with had a pool of over $103,000. Up next, you see the trophy being presented to the winning connections. We'll hear from Paula Duca and a guest here in just a moment. Let's set the stage real quick for the next stakes race. The Ashley T. Cole, mile and an eighth on the inner turf. And this is a surprise early in the wagering. This will change, but red night for Bill Mott off back-to-back -back wins. Five to one morning line, Jose Ortiz. Talk about a horse who has a will. the favorite. How about a horse who has a will to win? He's lost two races of seven, both by a nose. He is a fighter, is Red Knight, and the fans are showing him respect at the window. Chad Brown, though, is going to be tough to deal with in this race. He has offering plan the four. He also has call provision, who's going to be cutting back in distance, going in marathons of late, including last time out at a mile and five-eighths. Yeah, he might have a real strong kick. Call provision. He's a salty horse, earned over a half million himself, seven for 18, and he's always there. All right, that race is coming up next. Right now, we're going to wrap up the gallant bloom. Let's send it downstairs to Paula Duca. Well, we're close to Movember as uh, Jose Ortiz has a, a dirt mustache here as Union strikes, rolls up the rail, and the gallant bloom did not break well. Take us through your trip after that. I didn't break well quite well but she's a feeling that I always come from off of it and uh, I just didn't panic try to follow the right kind of horses and when we get closer to the quarter pole I see an opening in the rail so I went there I know the feeling from she's gonna have some run to the April I have rode her a couple of times and that's what I did and thanks God it opened open up for me did you think she saw that filly to the outside of her, the seven, because she really dug deep like the last 100, 150 yards? I think she didn't like when I whipped her. And when I stopped whipping her the last 16, she really took off. <laughs> <laughs> there was some blood coming from the bottom of her foot. Did she clip heels or something happened there towards the end? It looked superficial, though. Yeah, I think by the 316 pole, uh, it was pretty tight between the one and me, and I think that's, that's where it happens. Well, congratulations, Jose. Another great at stakes win with Union Strike here, guys. On a roll as usual. Talented young man, Eclipse Award winning rider, and that looked eerily similar. Different circumstances, obviously, different kind of race, but to his uh, Gronkowski ride in the Belmont Stakes. Yeah, you ride that rail, and it's a dangerous move because if it doesn't open, look out. And as he had mentioned, he is familiar with Kirby's Penny, and he knew that she was going to keep running the way she had fired. But uh, what a stretch kick, especially that last 100 yards or so. And as he mentioned, it was after he stopped whipping her. And that's, what, that's how you become a champion jockey is to understand what's working and what's not working and to make those split-second decisions. He realized it wasn't helping, goes to a vigorous hand ride and wins it drawing off. Let's check in again with Paul. My fault, guys. I wanted to add to the end of that. There was a mini bridge jumper actually on Lewis Bay. I had mentioned to you guys right before there were 16 starts with Lewis Bay, and he had never missed the board only one time she had. Well, she missed it today, and there was over 50000 to 60000 to show on her. That's why you saw the show prices a little bit bigger than the place prices, guys. Never a good way to go. Yeah, it's a very tough way to live. Our show brought to you each and every day in part by Run Happy, the champion sprinter never lost in his career when he was sprinting. Perfect seven for seven. Won the Breeders' Cup sprint in track record time. There he is on the farm in Claiborne in Paris, Kentucky. We're going to see his runners coming to a racetrack near you in the not-too-distant future. We can't wait for that. And the sales, you're going to start seeing uh, his little babies in the November sales in Kentucky. And... I know that uh, Jim McInvale and Claiborne Farm have gotten very much behind Run Happy with the right mares, and uh, they're very excited to see a horse that raced without any medication now have a chance to pass that on to generation after generation, and we certainly appreciate all the support here, the New York Racing Association from Mr. McInvale and Run Happy as they sponsor this show with Claiborne and, and uh, sponsored, of course, the Run Happy Travers. So certainly he's putting his money where his mouth is as he's done throughout his business career, and he's making a no different tact here with his stallion. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we just saw Jose Ortiz win that last race. He unseated... Javier Castellano, who had a, a, a string of four consecutive Eclipse Awards as the top rider in the country. He is one of the best there is in this game. Sensational rider. Here's another edition of Run Happy Jock Talk with Javier Castellano. Run 
I got a big old supper, 2004, British School Classic. It was my first British School and Brita, my first British School Classic too also. And that time um, I started stop the lottery and I think it has a kind of horse it put me in the map. My favorite part to be jockey is the routine. I love the sport, I love the horses, I love the fan, I love the daily races. If you're born to be jockey, I love the sport, I like to ride it, I like to race it. I hope I can do it forever. <laughs> the little time I have, I try to spend the time with my family. I try to play with the kids. My two girls, they play tennis. I try to go watch tennis. And my little boy, he like to play baseball. I try to play baseball with him. And try to take it to school and pick it all and do activities. And those are little time I try to enjoy with the family. I like to eat. I like to eat healthy. And I like to have a good dinner and I like to have a good breakfast, I like to have a good lunch, and it's, I mean, something like vacation with the family, pool, beach, and good dinners. His record-breaking accomplishments on the racetrack paved his way here to the stall of legends. Now retired to stud, we welcome the dawning of a new era as this esteemed champion hopes to stake his claim to immortality. His blazing speed and striking good looks have been passed down to his remarkable first folds. Folds that will carry the flag of their famous father and one day hope to break records of their own. Medication free and undefeated in sprint competition. Run happy, standing at Cleveland Farm. go trail turning for home still in front but here come King Prisa and Carafa and Carafa gets first run Carafa has taken the lead King Prisa second offering plan on the outside and then comes Latigo trail tapitation's got a lot of work to do and Carafa is going to do it Carafa has won it over offering plan Wow, this horse is neat. Nine-year-old Carafa coming off a win in the West Point, but it's in the Ashley T. Cole. This horse has done his best work. It's gonna be the sixth straight year he is lined up in this race, seeking his fourth victory in this race as well, and showing at nine years old, he still has a little punch left in the tank. That had to be such a special win for Tim Hills and the owners, Pinch and Braverman, because it had been a long time between drinks for this millionaire. He's such an honest competitor, and he just fights. One of my favorite races I've called in the last few years at Monmouth was him in my first season, 2015, getting through ridiculous traffic to get up. And uh, it was nice to see him put it all together last time. Won it 2013, 2015, 2016. And recent form suggests he is just as capable as getting a fourth here this afternoon. Let's take a look at the West Point back on August the 24th. This was his last race. He beat Offering Plano. I thought it was the horse to beat in this race, even though Chad Brown sends out two, including Call Provision. 
who was the morning line favorite, but what a run he put in from off the pace. Yeah, he got the jump, but he came with big strides as well, and the offering plan got out, but just couldn't catch him, and he wasn't going to catch him, even if it was a little further. This was just the day for the old pro to get the money, and he earned it. Beautiful trip that he worked out, but that's what you have to do in these types of races. He went off at 17 to 1, which, of course, hindsight's always 20 20. That was a little high for him, but he rewarded uh, those who decided to stick with him. You want to doubt him again today? He's 13 to 1, so you're getting a price again as we take a look here at offering plan. For Chad Brown, so he was beat a half length in that West Point last time out. He's a four time winner here at Belmont, and he too, like we were talking about, with 55, the Philly, who we just saw in the last race from Chad Brown, this horse has a potent late kick. Yeah, he always shows up. And so the question here is, what will his price be offering plan? Because he's typically a lot lower than what you're seeing right now. And, and that's what you have to decide. He'll be coming. But he showed a slight bit of vulnerability, I felt, last time out in the West Point by not catching Carafa, even though he was within a half lane. It wasn't as though he put in a particularly powerful effort in defeat that day. And I'm, I'm just wondering if you could get a little bit of a better deal, so to speak, on someone else. And that's why I landed on Red Knight. The other Chad Brown runner, this one here called Provision. He usually puts in a pretty potent late kick as well, but he's been very effective winning at much longer distances than what he's running today. I've found that these kind of horses that turn back, they still have that good, you know, ability to crush in the final eighth of a mile. And you'll see him rolling call provision only to lose by a nose to his stable mate and owner mate focus group in a thrilling edition of the John's Call. Get DQ'd in here, placed fourth in the end for a little interference, but that closing kick always very devastating from call provision. It was a seven time winner. It's time for a paddock report. It's brought to you by Hillendale Farm. Now Stan and Curlin for $150,000. We're going to send it downstairs to Paula Duca. Thanks, Greg. And we'll start with, obviously, the two favorites in here, the two Chad Brown runners. Well, actually, not the favorites in here, but your two Chad Brown runners. Uh, the four offering plan. And listen, you can't fault the way this horse looked um, by spring at last, and you can't fault his resume. I mean, he really has not thrown in a clunker besides the Shadwood, uh, uh, Shadwell mile at Keeneland when he had the 12 posts in a 14 horse field. And you can argue he didn't run that bad, only losing that race by four and a quarter lengths. Now, Carafa, the nine year old beat him last time. So maybe that's what the public is thinking. Oh, maybe you can beat this horse and Voodoo Song beat him two times before, but he is definitely the one to beat on the outside or just on the inside of the outside call provision. And, you know, he's sort of a, a horse that's tough to figure out, right? He's seven for 18 lifetime, but only one of those wins are at Belmont. Is he a better Saratoga horse than he is a Belmont horse or were his Belmont races where he did lose were in the man of war and, and, and tougher races. So we'll see what happens with call provision. He does get the 11 post. I don't think that's going to really matter that much considering going um, the mile and the eighth. Let's get to the old veteran here, Carafa, the two. Uh, listen, at nine years old, can he win races back to back? He a shocking upset last time at 17 and a half to one when he got the jump on offering plan. He looked good again in the paddock, talking to the connections, and they're hoping that maybe this nine-year-old can string two wins together. And I think he's got a pretty good look in here. Then my last horse will be the seven Gucci factor. I think this horse is a horse that is very sneaky. Went out of the state bred company last time out and won. Christophe Clement decided in December 2nd, 2017 to stick to Skelding back on turf after the first time this horse got on turf. It was a disaster. And since then, he has absolutely destroyed his competition and last time came from way out of it to beat Dr. Dr. Edgar. So I thought he was a viable long shot in here and is actually getting bet, guys. Yeah, I thought he's kind of the now horse is the up-and-comer in here, Gucci Factor, the 70s at 5-1 to one on the board. He's coming in off back-to-back -back wins. He's only going to be making his fifth career start on grass. He's three for four on the turf. As we see Michael Dubb, Chad Brown, and his jockeys talking a little strategy there, Javier Castellano, of course, writing offering plan for Michael Dubb and Chad Brown. And I read her a tease for different owners on call provision. And the, mention, the horse you mentioned before there, um, Gucci Factor, 
taking some action right here. Both David Aragona and Anthony Big A Stabile picked them, picked him on top during Talking Horses. So some sharp minds are on board with Gucci Factor coming off those back-to-back -back wins. There he is. Yeah, if he can step up just a little and show some improvement, he's going to be very dangerous here in this spot. He's shown a ton of talent on turf for Christophe Clement so far, including two of those wins coming right here at Belmont. Here's a look at the three, though. This is Red Knight. This is a horse who opened up, actually, as the favorite. Jose Ortiz filling in for the injured junior Alvarado. And this horse, it's narrow margins, but he's been getting up to win. In fact, he's won five of his last six starts. Here we're going to take a look at uh, his most recent victory with his regular pilot, Junior Alvarado, aboard. And we are all wishing Junior such a speedy recovery. What a class gentleman he is. But Red Knight comes and gathers them all in. And it's a horse, the, the perfect comment for him, if you're summarizing it, knows where Wire is. Because he's always there. He, his biggest win has been by a length and a quarter. His only two losses have both come by a nose. Love horses like this. Red Knight, what more can you ask for than a horse who just gives you everything, no matter what the situation, distance, course. Even on the main track in his debut, it was rained off the turf, lost by a nose at 17 to 1. He is a stone-cold racehorse. Get signed up, get started, play along. $200 new member bonus when you use the promo code Belmont Live, And that allows you to bet any track, anywhere, any time. You can also download the Naira Bets app and take... New York Racing with you wherever you go. It's a very easy to use app and it's a lot of fun. You can also access all kinds of other things from the New York Racing Association. Be sure to download this and remember wherever you are, just go to nairabets.com and open up your account today. It's a phenomenal service and it's a good way and it's the only way if you're not at a New York facility to bet that Naira Bets late pick five, but that's not the only reason to join. Naira Bets, an outstanding way to make your account wagering. Post parade coming up here for the Ashley T. Coles. The runners make their way onto the main track here. Mile and an eighth on the inner turf. Again, turf condition listed as good for those just joining us. We're going to start off with the old man here, Carafa. Six straight year lining up in this race, seeking a fourth victory in this race. He is hickory tough, and he'll be fighting all the way. He'll need to work out another perfect trip, but he's 14 to 1 if you believe in him. Surprised he's not taking any attention off that win. Here is Red Knight. For Bill Mott, Jose Ortiz filling in. And Jose has been aboard for two of his victories. Career starts two and three, so he's very familiar. I thought the horse to beat in here. Here's offering plan for Chad Brown. Javier Castellano on board. He just got beat narrowly by Carafa last out. Yeah, you can't knock this six-year-old. He will give you everything he has again today, and that includes a late stretch finish. Turf debut for Winston's chance, and we'll see if he's forwardly placed. For Deborah Breed. Facing a very tall order, and that's why you get a huge price. Leave him at the gate. Lear Germani sends this one out, coming off a victory against New York Bread Allowance Optional Claiming yep. Company. He surged right at the end there in a wild finish at the spa. Gucci Factor, the now horse coming in off back-to-back -back wins for Christophe Clement. Nice horse is Gucci Factor. Still getting played. He's at 5-1. to one. Hit it once more. Trained by Gary Siak and Eric Cancel aboard. Nice victory last time at Finger Lakes in a state bred stake. Now, however, he comes to the grass where he has not hit the board. Shown some speed on dirt, but not in his two turf tries. Black Tide, we know he loves to run out and make everyone come catch him for David Canizzo. Yes, and one of these days he might just keep on going. He's done it before. He did it in the Mohawk last year. Yeah, when he beat Offering Plan and wrapped. Here's Tapitation, John Velasquez for Ralph Nix. I thought that last trip might be a little uh, sneaky good. Maybe if you're looking for a long shot to get a piece of it, Tapitation could be a part of the equation. Here's the other Chad Brown runner who is favored right now. He's the morning line favorite for Klarovich Stables with Irad Ortiz Jr. Call Provision. He is uh, a good competitor and another. We have, we have several horses in here, Greg, that make their presence felt in the very late stages, and he's yet another. Here's one more, Wrapped, who's going to be coming from way out of it, and he is talented for Bobby Roboto. Yeah, he finished very well in the West Point with those white blinkers on. Offering plan, Gucci Factor, Carafa. They've all beat Wrapped in each of his last three starts, but he has been in the mix in all three of those starts. This is a great rendition of the Ashley T. Cole coming up. Chad Brown with the top two choices on the board. We'll be back. New York on the outside, California Bruins 
third. Shared belief laboring back to the fifth. One furlong to run. Bayern, first of New York. California Chrome on the outside. The three of them come to the wire. Bayern, first of New York. California Chrome. Here's the finish. Bayern, Bayern holds on. They're off. Get the horses anywhere, anytime with Naira Bats. Rushes out of there to take the lead. It's easy on your computer or Naira Bats app. Earn valuable reward points on bets. Play in our exclusive promotions and earn cash rebates. Off the turn with the length of the half lead. Sign up now. Bet $200 and get $200. A dramatic finish. Bet any track, anywhere, anytime. NairaBets.com. Back on Belmont Park Live, Greg Wolf, Paul Aduka, Frank Miramati with you as we get set for the Ashley T. Cole coming up. And Red Knight, this was the horse who opened up as the favorite. First start of his career as a race was taken off the turf. He got herded and missed by a nose. His only other defeat came when he hit the gate at the start. He missed by a nose in that one as well. Outside of that, He's won all five turf starts. And he's the young man in the field. He's actually the only four-year-old in this field of professionals. So he's facing older than himself. But uh, look at him. He looks outstanding as he walks on the course toward the starting gate. He has come to battle. This will be the sixth different type of distance that he participates in in his what will be eighth career start. So he's versatile. He's going to give you that kick. He also has enough speed to keep him close. Meanwhile, it's going to be fun to see how, how much this horse opens up. Jose Lizcano has been the regular rider aboard Black Tide. We've seen him in the past open up several lengths on fields and then just try and hang on. And as you mentioned, he actually did hang on in a stakes race in the Mohawk against the likes of Offering Plan, Wrapped, and others that day. There's nothing more dangerous than speed. And when you get lonely up there, you can get brave. And Black Tide has proven he can do it. So he'll try and run away from this field early on. Meanwhile, next door to him in the starting gate, Tapitation. He's caught your eye here, huh? He, he's my long shot. I, I just like him. He's got his ears up. He just seems to have a presence about him this afternoon. And some of his races would make him an interesting participant, particularly at the price that you're getting. And it's always beautiful when you get John Velasquez aboard. Hall of Fame rider on board for Ralph Nix. Three of his five wins, Tapitation, have come right here at Belmont Park. Favorite, though? has become call provision the 11 horse your two to one top choice on the board one of two for chad brown in this field the other one being the four offering plan 
Let's send it upstairs to the voice of New York Racing for the call. It's the Ashley T. Cole. Here's Larry Colmus. Here comes Wrapped up to the outside stall to complete the line here. And they're all in line. Red Knight a little restless there. They're off in the Ashley T. Cole. And Winston's Chance got the jump on him out of the gate. There goes Black Tide, though, on the outside, as expected, to do his thing. And these two are out to set the pace from hit it once more. And Carafa, then Tapitation on the outside. Gucci Factor is in behind them. Then Call Provision, Red Knight to the inside. They're being followed right behind them by Offering Plan and Leave Them at the Gate, while Wrapped is the trailer. Onto the back stretch, Black Tide the leader, but only by a length and a half. Hit it once more, goes up on the outside of Winston's chance now after a 23.92 quarter. And then it's Tapitation, who's five lengths off the lead in fourth, Carafa's fifth on the inside, then Gucci Factor. Red Knight is racing ten lengths behind, and Call Provision just tracks him on the outside. Then offering plan, leave him at the gate and wrapped at the back of the pack. So it is front running Black Tide, who's out there by five now, ran 47.81 for the half mile. He continues to lead the way into the far turn, hit it once more, second by another three. Dapitation is third. Winston's chance starts to drop back a bit on the inside. Carafa comes off the rail, still about eight lengths behind. Then Gucci Factor, Red Knight, call provision, offering plan, leave him at the gate and wrapped. Black Tide rolling along here, five lengths in front of his competition. He ran three quarters in one, 12.07 seconds. And Black Tide will come to the top of the stretch all by himself in the Ashley T. Cole. Back into second on the inside is long shot Winston's chance as Black Tide drifts out and starts to tire with a furlong to run, but he's still there. He's got a three-length lead. Here comes Tapitation, Red Knight. Here's Carafa on the inside with his run. It's still Black Tide, though. He's holding them all off. Black Tide still there coming down to the wire, and Black Tide's going to do it. He held on to win. Offering plan came from the clouds for second, and there was a blanket photo for third. Jose Lizcano, Black Tide, early on in this race. They got a little company from Winston's Chance, got separation up to his old tactics and able to hang on at a big price. And it's not just hang on. He held on decisively. Look at him just kick at odds of 28 to 1. Beautiful ride by Jose nursing him through 112 flat and a mile and a 36. He just kept on going and there were some closing horses, no doubt, but he didn't finish an exhausted customer. He finished the job nicely and held off the oncoming offering plan very easily to score by a length and a half. It's an extremely close photo for third. David Canizzo heading to the winner's circle picture time. This got to feel awfully good. Yeah, he did have plenty left in the tank with this performance. 28 to 1. Here in the Ashley T. Cole for this performance. We've seen these tactics from this horse several times here on our show in the past. Now this is his fifth win on this Belmont turf course. Jose Lescano, his regular pilot, getting it done on the front end every step of the way. All smiles from Jose Lescano. We'll be back to wrap this race up right after a short time out. You're watching Belmont Park Live and a huge upset in the Ashley T. Cole. We'll be back. Kentucky Derby winner Orb was the leading freshman sales sire of weanlings, yearlings, and two-year-olds. On the track, his runners have scored on both dirt and turf, including stakes winners Autumn Warrior and Orbolution, stakes performer Scrapper, and TBN rising star Explorer. In the sales ring, his progeny continue to sell well beyond his stud fee, including the million-dollar co-sale topper at Saratoga. Classic winner, classic pedigree, Orb standing at Claiborne Farm. How do New York breads perform? They win in world-class company. From grade one races in Dubai, where New York sired New York bread Mind Your Biscuits won the Golden Shaheen for a second time. To Belmont, adding to his status as the richest New York bread with a close second in the Met Mile. The Belmont Festival saw two more New York breads become millionaires. Four-star crook in the New York Stakes and world record setter disco partner with a repeat victory in the Jiper. New York breads, get with the program.
Back on Belmont Park Live and Black Tide, Jose Lizcano opens up on this field and the six-year-old just keeps on going, gets the job done at 28-1. to one. Nice high five there between jockey and trainer. And congratulations to Ivory Sisters Racing. It's actually been a very good weekend for that owner-trainer combination as well. This six-year-old waves goodbye. And I guess the theme on uh, today's show Greg has been horses going over the half million dollar mark. Here's Black Tide doing just that. Pick three comes back $913. So this Nara Bets late pick five, uh, it is going to be monstrous. Just over $100,000 in the pool. You got the $14 horse that was tough to come by, Union Strike. I think harder than even $14 would suggest. And then a $59 runner in this Ashley T. Cole. We still got one race to come. We're signing off here in a moment. You can watch the finale on the Naira Bats app, so be sure and make use of that. I'm trying to look up real quick here what these payoffs are in the Naira Bats late pick five, so. As you do that, I'll remind the fans that Andy Serling and Maggie Wolfendale will join you and Paul as the regular team gets in business on Wednesday. Smallest payout, over $9,800. So be sure and watch on the Naira Bats app to close things out. Union Strike with a win in the Gallant Bloom. And Black Tide taking them gate to wire in the Ashley T. Cole MSG Plus. We'll see you on Wednesday at 4.